Well, welcome. I'm glad you guys came. Christmas Eve morning. How special. What a wonderful time. So, you know, we know, we all know um, that when we celebrate Christmas, it's really, we know it's really not about the gifts. And actually, we know it's really not about the family and friends. This is a time when we open up and an energy that we normally don't live in is available for humanity. This is a very special time. I wanted to read from Jesus Teacher Healer. This is 137 in my book, of course. In spirit world, when Christmas comes, the outpouring of the Christ spirit is not only upon the earth, but upon the finer spheres above the earth. There is great rejoicing. We assure you that all the joys of Christmas are truly found in the spirit world. Christmas is a time of rejoicing, a time of reunion with friends, and indeed, friends in spirit visit their homes and to visit and see their loved ones. You can be at peace. You can look up to the angelic throng, catch the mystic spirit of the Christmas. Do not let the noise and clamor and excitement of mind and body overwhelm you. Do not fail to hear heavenly choirs singing out their joy, their praise, their thanksgiving to God for sending to earth the priceless gift of his own son, his own spirit, to save, to heal, to comfort, to bless. So Christmas is not just a human experience, it's a spiritual experience. And those of you that have people on the other side, don't you notice them at Christmas? They might get the breath of them or... Are you hear their voice? Are you sense their presence? Yes. It's a time of the heavens expanding as well as our human consciousness expanding. The separation between man and spirit thins, and the spiritual connection that we do not feel at other times is there. The Christmas spirit all started with his birth. In our... Um, Inner quest metaphysics of Christmas. Did you guys come to that? Is anybody there? I love what God gave me. I'm going to read just a little bit of it. We've said the same thing for 20 years now, but I think it's beautiful. It's, pardon? 33. 30, I'm sorry, excuse me. We've done this for 33 years. <laughs> Let's not slide ourselves here. <laughs> All right. In the universe, never before was such a gathering. The love for man was overwhelming, and the courts of heaven were filled, and a hush fell over all. There in the midst was divine creator, Father, Mother, God, and as all honored God with a love unspeakable, one soul stepped forth, a soul so bright, he was pure love made manifest. This, the Son of God, the dearly beloved of the Father, was Jesus the Christ. And as he stood, such a connection of love emanated, all could see the oneness. Though not a word was spoken, all knew the mission. This was the one soul that would bring the consciousness of knowing God back to the planet. He would create a bridge and gift mankind with a pattern to follow. Is that not beautiful? The energy of Jesus' birth was a celestial event for sure, and is a celestial event today. It is a moment when the love of God, the vibration of God's pure love, elevates us all. So when he was born, the light was bright. Can you imagine the light that day? Can you imagine how he felt when he opened his eyes and he was in the baby body? Have you thought about that? Can you imagine how you feel when you open your eyes and you're in the baby body? It was a great plan, wasn't it? Ah. Uh, What's happening? And we have to get reacquainted with the body and eating and needs and speaking and finding this human world. But the spirit that is born in that body is a bright light, even yours. Yours was a bright light. His was immense. So can you imagine him opening his eyes and seeing his family and knowing that they're the ones he's going to walk with? And then can you imagine... A few days later, after his family had felt what they felt, after they saw the shepherds and the wise men and the angelic forces and the shepherdess who came and let them live with her for a while until Mary recovered, you know, can you imagine? They went through this whole expansion. Can you imagine how they felt weeks later, days later? 
when they had to cook meals and earn money and get back into the human condition. But yet, they were changed. They were changed. Everyone felt God. There was a joy at his birth. Every child brings a light into the world, but he brought a light for the world. So we all brought our light to the world. He brought a light for the world. In these moments when spirit touches matter, matter is expanded. It can contract. We have to go back to work. We have to make dinner. We have to change diapers. It can contract, but it will never contract to where it was before because it has been touched by spirit. There is a deeper energy of God light in every person involved. It is a changed form forever. So, the celestial moment of his birth. Celestial moments occur when spirit dominates, engulfs, silences, becomes one with matter. When spirit is the power moving through matter. It's when we feel spirit and we have set aside all physical thought, expression, concern, beingness. We set aside our physicality and we feel spirit. And you all know exactly what I'm talking about. We all have those moments. When we allow that spirit to be in us 100%, and that's what it feels like when you get the ahas, when you feel the love of God touching your heart, it is 100%. You are not thinking about anything but that spiritual touch. You are in that energy of oneness with God, energy of the Christ light. I wanted to share from Patrick's article uh, from December newsletter. Did you guys read the newsletter? Pretty good. This is what he said. He made a quote. If everyone would light one little candle, what a bright world this would be. You know, we've heard that quote. We grow up with it. Then he said, when I was a child, I often wondered about this. And I would imagine everyone on the planet holding a candle. And I would see the earth as one bright light surrounded by an even brighter light. It was a beautiful thought and a beautiful dream. Can you imagine the mind of a child thinking that? Being able to envision and imagine that that is a possibility for us to actually have a connection? A moment when spirit was the dominant force, the dominant energy, when the earth could light, everyone's heart open. I think this happens at Christmas. I don't think people consciously understand it. I think the great light his child mind saw is around the planet. I think the lights are opening every time we're trying to love, every time we buy something for someone or think about something. I think we're, 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 we're turning our lights on. I don't think we're consciously aware of it. When we have moments when we are overwhelmed, when we are having a spiritual connection, God to us, it is powerful, but we can also have human to human. When we feel the spiritual connection with another human, we did our Metaphysics of Christmas last Sunday night. It was fabulous. Was anybody here? It was fabulous, guys. It was amazing. And so um, Hazel was sitting next to me on a chair next to me at the time, and her grandfather, Patrick, came out to sing Abraham's song. Now, she'd seen it on the video many times, but she was watching it live now. And her little face and her little, she's standing up, got, got him tracked in, and she's just absorbing, just absorbing. And I'm watching Patrick to, you know, I'm quasi-directing out there, watching Patrick, he's doing a great job. But I saw Patrick catch, and I saw him with this little half smile. And I went, "Uh uh-oh, he just saw Hazel. (laughs) And I asked him afterwards what happened. I said, I saw it, it's on film. (laughs) And he said, I almost cried. He said, I saw her face looking at me with such a wonder and love and openness. And like it touched his soul and his soul touched her soul and he said it took everything I had not to cry. In that moment, do you think Patrick will ever forget that? Do you think he was expanded? Yes. 
In that moment, his soul got expanded because he got to touch the love of someone else while he was doing something for God, while he was singing his song. You know, and he will contract. He'll wake up and make me dinner again. (laughs) But he'll never lose that moment. He'll never lose that moment. Hazel probably won't either. She's, she's little, she might not keep it in her conscious memory, but she won't lose it either. Because in that moment, their souls touched and ignited. And we know she felt it too, or he wouldn't have felt it. It was a connection of infinite and complete love, complete love and support. So her spirit touching his spirit was an acceptance and an openness. Spiritual moments of love that transcend the human condition for one moment change us forever. One moment changes forever. Do you remember all of your Christmases, moments scattered when a human connection opened for a spiritual connection? Or a spiritual connection was just there? You just felt the love of God? Every one of those moments are in you. If you look for them in your energy field, each little moment is a twinkling light in your aura. This is from Spirit. We don't have to approach every Christmas as starting from scratch. We can actually turn on the Christmas lights that are already in us. Don't look for the sad. And I can say this. I was doing my meditation Friday, and um, my dad came in my meditation. Just, I'm minding my own business. He appeared. And he's sitting at my computer, and he looked at me at this very sad face, and he said, I am so sorry. And I said, like, What? And he said, I didn't mean to hurt anybody. Blanket statement. I said, okay, well, I forgive you. We're good. Move on. (laughs) Next. You know, I was kind, but like, hmm, I forgive you. And then at my talk for 10, we were talking about Christmas and Christmas trees. And I actually heard myself saying the year my father told us he was not allowing Christmas trees anymore in our world. I was in fifth grade. And I said that on Talk for 10, and I went, and, I, and we just went, well, screw you. And as soon as we were old enough, we brought in our own. We, if we could drive, there was going to be a Christmas tree. We bought it. We brought it. But between those years, there was not. And I thought, why am I even saying this? You know what I'm saying? Why am I even talking about this? Talk for 10, 10 minutes. Move on, girl. And I went home, and I started talking to Patrick, and I started to cry. That moment that my dad said that to me, he stopped loving me. And when he said that to us all, he said, no more Christmas. He was saying, you guys are not mine anymore. And that was true. We weren't. He kind of let us go, disciplined us, but he did, we weren't his anymore. And then the meditation made sense. I never stopped loving him, but he stopped loving me. And I was sharing with Patrick, crying my eyes out, and Patrick goes, Cindy, we got to look at the positive. (laughs) And then he's telling me about his dad who never loved him at all. (laughs) We're both crying. It's like, okay, all right, we got to let this go. So many of us have pivotal, pivotal moments around this thinning, this spiritual thinning that are not positive. And do you guys ever have yours come up over the holidays? A moment where it was a sad Christmas or something sad happened? Yeah. So I would like us to consider letting it go. Like when my dad said, I am sorry for what I did to you guys. I am sorry for that. I'm sorry too. I never stopped loving him. I fought with him the rest of my life. (laughs) When you stop loving, you don't fight no more. (laughs) You know? But Patrick and I ended our conversation with deciding that the lights and the good that we have experienced is where our hearts need to focus. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so then I could leave that conversation, and we wrapped, I don't know how many presents, in harmony. Did you guys do it in harmony? In harmony. (laughs) 
we did everything in harmony because we had chosen to go forward with the lights. And as you choose to do that, then you can remember those moments also that are in your field of times when the light got turned on. Do you understand what I'm saying? The light gets turned on and you're brilliant and you're and, and that moment in time, me feeling that about my dad, my dad taking his stand of military training kids, um, that can go into a ball and I can put it on my Christmas tree because my dad said he was sorry. So that, that can become the light on my tree. Okay, We can let go of all the things that we feel were heavy and reignite all the beautiful wonders that were amazing. You guys getting it? Okay. So, Jesus Christ came to bring the Father's love. The light as it entered matter must have been amazing. It must have been amazing. That moment, there had to have been receptivity on the earth to allow that high of a spirit to be born. That moment, everybody who was going to play a role in it had to be there to allow the work out picturing of that spirit to be born. And that moment, heaven and earth were one. And as we light our little blessings where we have expanded, as we light those blessings where we have expanded from childhood on, where we've had those human moments, those celestial moments, you will find that your arc field is filled with light and the sorrow buckets are diminished. They're in the background because the love of God for you, the love of the universe for you, the love of your fellow man for you, the love that you've experienced where you expanded is still present in you. Say, I got it. Let's go within. Let's just take a breath. And feel a beautiful love of God filling this space. And we're going to bring in all the Christmas angels. And I want you to see a column of light come over you. And allow yourself to go into your heart center now. I want you to feel yourself, you and Jesus, moving into that garden of your heart. Just imagine it. Let yourself go there. And as you enter, see your garden filled with Christmas angels waiting for you, celebrating you. Feel their love, their support. And feel them as they lift you up now, lifting you up out of the garden of your heart, lifting you up into the sky, to a beautiful night sky, beautiful space, where you too can look back and see the earth. See the light around the earth. See the Christmas blessings as the angels just shower the earth with blessings and see the light respond. And now see the love of Father, Mother, God engulfing the earth. And sense, see, feel the light that Jesus Christ brought to the earth, once again coming in strength, once again coming in light, because we are ready to receive. We are ready to receive the gift that he brought. See a shaft of golden light moving to the earth. Just feel as it just showers the earth to overflowing. And feel that you are connected with that light and with Mother Earth. But 
But now look at your energy field. Look at all the beautiful lights within your field, your arc field, lit up with all the wonders and expanded consciousness that you have had. All the Christmas blessings, all the blessings of spirit and matter. And realize you are an expression of the beloved Father, Mother, God. You are the Christ. Feel the Christmas angels just gently bringing you back into that beautiful orb of light that is the earth. Feel the love strong and bright, bringing you back into your beautiful garden of your heart. And see yourself still shining. I am one with Father, Mother, God. I let that light move through me now. And I am blessed. Feel the garden filled to overflowing. Feel the joy. Feel your readiness to receive all the universe has for you. More moments, more gifts, more blessings. And just gently bring your awareness back to your chair, your feet, this world. And when you're ready, Father, Mother, God, we thank you. We walk with you as the Christ. Gently open your eyes. And from this moment, you will go out, and you will make lunch, and you will pay bills, and you will do all the things that the earth asks you to do. But if you saw any light in the meditation, you are expanded. And you take out one more lit little energy in your arc field to the world. Say, yay, God. Yeah. So it is.